Hello, I am Ankit Rao. I am a FYBML student from YCL College and today I am going to trek the Karnala Fort. From bird sanctuaries to forts, from forests to adventure. This is the fort which consists of all the things. The Karnala Fort is about 1500 feet from the ground level and uh, it consists of lot of natural and scenic beauties. On our way, we will show you some of the nice naps. So here we go. Right now we are on our way to Karnala Fort and the place I am tapping is the Karnala Bird Sanctuary. This the declaration of conversion of Karnala under wildlife sanctuary regulations has helped it grow into a refreshing green oasis. After a rigorous and painstaking trek of about 3 hours, we have ultimately reached our destination that is Karnala Fort. Right now, we are at the height of 1500 feet from the ground level. We had very steep slopes during trekking. Trekking in monsoon is a risky proposition. The trail is very slippery and physically straining. The trek though is steep terrain but once you are up there, you enjoy the excellent view and the breeze which blows you away. As we have moved to our uh, destination of the Thumb Fort, that is the Kanala Fort, I'll tell you some more facts and information about this fort after we reach inside the gate. The exact date of formation of this fort is actually not known. But it is said that this fort was made in 1400 CE. That is a common error. Said that, that this fort was built under the Dev Yadavs from 1248 to 1318 BC, and then it was ruled by the Tughlaqs from 1318 to 1458 BC. Karnala Fort was a fort which was considered of very strategic importance because it connected the Bow Pass, which connects the interior of Maharashtra, that is Vidarbha. This is the main entrance gate of the Karnala Fort. And right now, we have reached a green thumb mountainous fort. The fort has two inscriptions, one in Marathi and other in Persian. The Marathi inscription, which has no date, is seen on the lower gate on the inner side. Its words are indecipherable. The Persian writing is on the upper gate, which reads Sayyid Nuruddin Muhammad Khan of 1735 CE and probably dates from the Mughal period. After the Nizams took it uh, from the Guz uh, took this fort from the Gujarat Sultans, the Gujarat Sultans took help of the Dom Francisco, who was actually the commanding officer of Portuguese. This fort had been long ruled by the Portuguese, and then comes to the story, the great emperor Shivaji, who started ruling this fort in 1670. After this fort came under the rule of Sh uh, the great emperor Shivaji, he did a lot of beautification and fortification so that it can be get uh, it can be protected from the britishers as well as from the nizams and the portuguese this is the main gate which connects to the fort Karnala consists of two forts, one at lower level and the other at higher level. At the center of higher level is a 125 feet basalt pillar, also known as the Pandu's Tower. This structure was used as a watchtower. With the demise of Shivaji in 1680, Aurangzeb took control over it and with the rise of Peshwas in 1740, they had control of this fort. But in 1818, Prother, that was the name of British commander, of East India Company took control over this fort and from that time onwards this fort was under British control. Here I am standing at the highest point of the fort from where I get a commanding view of the Arabian Sea on the one side and the Western Ghats on the other side. Right now I think I am sensing the power which Shivaji must have sensed hundreds of years ago. Right now, I think uh, I've reached the destination where I should have reached. With my documentaries later, this is Ankit Rao signing off. Bye bye. Take care. Karnala is a refreshing break from the concrete jungle of Mumbai. 
It is the trekkers paradise with about 40 groups visiting every year. Karnala Fort's history is a past long forgotten. But the present can be our united effort towards preserving the ecology and tranquility of this historic monument. <laughs>